greetings. I am Tulip Jodhuri. Welcome to my show, Hourglass Trails. And we are just on the verge of spring. And spring means flowers, butterflies, all the color. That is loving life with more colors. But love is a huge word. And it doesn't always come with good things and happiness. Much difficult to accept. It has its downsides. Sometimes we fall into ditches. But the thing is how to pick up ourselves. And seasons will roll by, and we the humans come and go. The best of is yet to come with next spring. So that's how we be positive and pick ourselves and speak on some pitfalls that we have in life. Today I have uh, Andre Dominiques with me as a guest. He is a self-employed person. He likes music. And he will talk to us about narcotics and how he was almost too deep into it, but he managed to come out and be a wonderful father of four children. So here is Andre for you. Hi, Andre. Hi, how are you doing? Thank, thank you. I'm doing good and so good because you are here and I wanted to join my show. Thank you again. Yes, definitely. So all that we know about the recent things ongoing also with vaping, thousands of people, especially young generation, getting sick with it, even deaths, and the narcotics, that's an ongoing challenge to our society. So tell us, Andre, how did you begin and what was the time when you went into narcotics? Um, the first time that I ever did anything was, um, I believe I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was always in and out of jail. So, um, just one day I have, uh, I found some stuff and I thought it was a cigarette and that was my first time that I, and you know, that I experienced marijuana. Mm -hmm. And, um, just throughout my life, I, uh, I, I smoked it. That was my first, uh, drug that I got addicted to. Um, I got, uh, I was going down a bad path, hanging out with the wrong crew. Ended up doing uh, some time. Um, when I got out, um, I was lost. Um, to me, like the world changed in the two years, the two and a half years I was in. So it like, began it, it, like as a curiosity? It, I mean, you didn't know it was marijuana and the cigarette. It's, 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 everything just changes when you are away for so long, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, when I came out, I was like, it, I didn't even recognize anybody. Stores changed, mm -hmm. you know? Even the slang, the way people talk within the two and a half years, you know? Mm -hmm. The slang is always changing, you know? So it was like, I was lost, you know? And then, um, I started hanging out with the wrong crew again, and so I tell was us more about how, because your life has changed and you yourself are not the you know the old self, but how did you find the new crowd of people who made you a whole new person, but at the same time it was a new life again? It was. Um, what did the same group? Of children same age or or some friends you didn't know it wasn't even it wasn't even um used to make the stories uh mm -hmm. the story short um when i came out of jail um i i started hanging out with this crew i got introduced to heroin i i, I sniffed it i didn't shoot or nothing i i was uh clueless for three years i was high every day for three years straight, I don't remember anything in those three years. Mm 
So did you go to uh, um, no, I, jail I, after these three years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh. um, what changed, what made me take a 360 degree turn mm -hmm. was that um, my girlfriend at the time, she came out pregnant with my first son. And that just made me think a whole different, you know, before I didn't care about anything. I didn't even think I cared about myself, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and just the fact that, wow, like, in like nine months, I'm going to have a kid. You know, so my whole way of thinking just turned around. Wow. I started I started doing, um, I, I started cleaning myself. Um and what really changed my life was um, there was a situation that happened, um, and I was actually on the way to commit a crime. Mm -hmm. oh. um, I had a gun on me. It was loaded. And my attempt was to shoot this guy. Um, I was walking by a church, and I have to say that that's the first time I ever felt God's presence. That's the first time that I felt him and I knew that he was real. Um, so I was walking by this church and all of a sudden I can't move. Mm -hmm. I can't move. It was like my feet were cemented to the ground. I had so much anger. I had tears coming down my eyes. Like, I was really all messed up in the head, and I only had a vision was just to go do this crime, you know? And um, I tried to, like, I tried to move my feet. Like, mm -hmm. I wanted to walk, but yeah. something was holding me still there. Yeah. And that's when the pastor, Pastor Jack, came out. Yeah. And I never met this dude before, and he's like, I've been waiting for you. And that's when I started going to church. And I got, you know, a little more of that. Um, that wasn't the first time I actually felt God, though. But that's when my life, first my son, mm -hmm. thank God for my boy. Uh, he, he'll be 20, he's 21 today. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, happy birthday, Nathaniel. <laughs> um, so sweet. Yeah, he's 21 today. So, wow. um, and, 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 and then God just come in, you know, show me uh um, a spot, you know, like for like years, I just like, how can you believe in something that you can't see? Uh -huh. Um, he changed my whole thing, you know, perspective on that. Like, I know he's real. He's in everybody. You just gotta, mm -hmm. you just gotta let him out and, and, and feel him. But, um, yeah. So what's your son's name? Who has a birthday today? Uh, Nathaniel Xavier Nathaniel. Dominguez. Yeah, he's Hi, Nathaniel. Today. Birthday, happy birthday from Tulip here and all of us at Damage Media. <laughs> and I have your dad here, brave and facing the world and yeah. leaving messages to anyone who has had a rough patches in life. Let's get back to Andre now. Yeah. So this is like a, you would like more said it was like an invisible force, the spiritual self that somehow came into you to rescue you from the life that was getting you down? I can't, I, I, I can't, exp I, 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 there's no word mm -hmm. to explain what I felt that day, but it's more like, it was like gravity was just pulling me down and I like, I can feel the force just holding me down, like I couldn't move. And then when the pastor came out and said, hey, I've been waiting for you. Isn't that a miracle? That's just like, yeah. that just like, I thought I was going crazy. Like, I don't even know this dude. And he's like, I've been waiting for you. And, and you had we've been gun expecting with you, even you. Then. I'm like. And at uh, that moment, you had your gun with you. Yeah. I actually ended up taking the gun out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he asked me, uh, he asked me to give it to him. And I didn't even tell him I had a gun. Mm -hmm. He's like. Can you give it to me? I'm like, I don't know why he was why I why he was talking about, but I just pulled it out, mm -hmm. took the clip out, and I gave it to him. And he invited me into church. 
I went to that church for a while. Okay. You know, um, I think he he really helped me a lot. I I, I got to give it to the man upstairs though. You know, he's a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> definitely, but so, listen, he look, works it. He works in mysterious ways. So yeah, definitely, I agree with I, you. I I I figure that out myself. Nobody can tell me otherwise. Yes, that is what we say. Like God has His own plans. Mm -hmm. and, and it will always get worse before it gets better. Wow, that's a good message. Yeah, it will always get. Um, I was in a point where. Not, not that I want to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. I, I just was thinking, like, what's my purpose? See, I don't have no purpose. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just going to be a renegade. And just that the only thing I had in my mind was destruction. Okay. You know, and like because everything that I touched, it was just, it, 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 it just destroyed, you know. And then okay. um, just... I'm glad that my life took a turn because of I'll course. either be dead or in jail. God forbid. So now, would you like to share more specifically about the kind of narcotics you used? Yes. Um, or like which one was <coughs> more strong? There was, only, yeah. there was only three of them that I ever did. Mm -hmm. um, marijuana was my first one. Mm -hmm. Cocaine was my second. And the one that really, the most dangerous one that really screwed me up and was taking me downhill uh, was uh, heroin. Um, yeah. uh, in, Sp in the Spanish language, it's called manteca. Manteca? Manteca, yeah. Uh -huh. um, I never shot it. You know, I never like, shot it or nothing, but I did sniff it. And I had a bad three years. Like I said, I was mm -hmm. high. I, I was high when I slept. I was high when I was up. I was literally high 24-7 for three years. It was blank. I don't remember anything. But just, I was high and I was making money. Um, another way of the devil pulling me and, mm -hmm. you know, destroying my life. So. But, uh, can you tell me a little bit about our, I mean, how did it strike you? Well, correct me if I am wrong. Sometimes these um, uh, narcotics are used to slow down pain and sometimes they are used to you took euphoria, the words right, make you, you happy. The words, How did it? You took the words right out of my mouth. You felt um, happy? A lot of people, um, when they're going through pain, whether they were raped, mm -hmm. they were bullied, um, you know, any other stuff mm -hmm. that, um, that, are, you know, that we're witnessing in the, in the world right now, um, everybody starts looking for the, um, that, uh, that cure to take the pain away, and you you start experimenting things, and people find it in different things. Some people find it in heroin. Some people take the pain away by doing coke. Some people take the pain by doing meth. This one gets rid of the pain by smoking marijuana. You know, it oh. all depends. So by the time you find the one that mm -hmm. takes the pain, whether it's like three minutes or an hour, whatever mm -hmm. the high, how long the high lasts. That's where, you know, that's mm -hmm. where they, so it all depends on. So the high, you mean that's when euphoria kicks in and you feel yeah, it so. Yeah, you don't feel nothing. Oh. You basically feel like you're floating in the air, no worries. And mm. the, the more, um, basically the, you know, the, the stronger the drug when, mm -hmm. you know, we get into like the, uh, like cocaine and heroin and stuff like that, those are really powerful and they're really addicting. And it only takes one time. Oh my so God. So if you guys, you know, if you guys are out there being, I was, I was, uh, um, what's it called? P uh, peer pressured mm -hmm. to doing something. Peer, yeah, 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 that's what I was yeah, talking I was like hanging out, friends. I was hanging out with the crowd and mm -hmm. um, they were like, oh, you're a punk, you're a wuss, you're this and that, mm -hmm. you know, and I was already high from marijuana, so, and then it's just, you know, one drug leads to another, and that's how it starts. It mm -hmm. just takes one drug, and it just takes one time, and you're hooked. It is so sad, isn't it? I mean, you came to it, it's just like a curiosity. You, at 10 year old, you had no idea that it's so bad, <coughs> but it was at home. Well, back then, um, I used to I used to see my my dad and his friends. They used to smoke these cigarettes, oh. 
and they used to pass them around mm -hmm. and everybody smoking a cigarette. So to me, it was just a cigarette. Everybody done it. But uh, I found one and I found a back some matches with it behind my dad's pickup truck one day. And I just happened to light it. And that was the first time that, yeah. Yeah, that I, I ever tried it. And I was. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, childhood and curiosity both go together. Yeah. Children are curious. But at that time, I guess it um, calls for more adults to be more responsible. Like the guns we talk about, whether we should have a gun at home or not. And if we have, to be responsible for it. So that anyone who is not in the proper senses has a chance to grab a gun, mm -hmm. right? So it was something like this. If it was not oh, it within your sight, you wouldn't have. But the only reason it. why these kids are doing that because name one game right now mm -hmm. from a from an Xbox or PlayStation that doesn't have a gun or killing in it. That is so true. It's what we instill in our kids. That's what they're gonna grow up from the movies. The music, mm -hmm. um, the games, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not going to lie, I played them games when I was younger too, yeah. you know? Those bad games like Grand Theft Auto, you know? Oh, all the it, kids it's play. like you yeah. shoot cops, you beat up people, you got, you you know, it, it's showing you exactly how the streets are by you playing in the game. So as you get older, in their mind, they think they're Tony Montana. They think they're Oscar Fay. They think that they're unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I was a beast in the game. I'm going to go in the streets to become a drug lord or something, you know? And mm -hmm. It's like the craving for power that gets the kids. So even from the video games that have, you have to remember that make you feel really you have to good remember about yourself. Yeah. From my mm -hmm. experience, and me being from the streets. Mm -hmm. The streets, all it has is nothing. There's nothing positive about being in the streets. Uh -huh. Because one, the streets is done using you. It's going to chew you up and spit you out and move to the next one. Oh, my God. So vicious. You know? You got one drug lord right now mm -hmm. that is spreading heroin and throughout the city. Once they lock him up, and he's doing live in prison for what he did. Another one, there's always another one to take over where he he's at. Yeah. You know, so it's just like. So would you say like um, if your home or your father did not lead it, you lead it lead you to the day you started smoking? Uh, were there any friends? with whom you played outside. Were ha any one of them involved that made you think that, yes, I want there's to smoke? Only, my whole life, there's only, like, I can count on my hand, on one hand, mm -hmm. five people that I, in my, my whole life, I've only had five real, real friends. Okay. Um, and they're hard to come by because um, everybody else to me is an associate. Mm -hmm. You know, you ever heard that saying, Keep your enemies closer and your best friend the farthest. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because your best friend is the one that knows everything about you. He has all the ammunition mm -hmm. to go against exactly. you. Exactly. And right. the enemy doesn't know nothing about you. So, in reality, your best friend becomes your and your your worst enemy, and mm -hmm. your worst enemy becomes your best friend. Okay. Because. You know, you guys don't know nothing about each other, but when you guys start talking, they get mm -hmm. to figure out they have a lot. They have a lot of you know stuff, you know, that they like and stuff like that. So, but. so as a parent, I mean, peer pressure and our kids at home. It's a big challenge even for the parents. The biggest. As thing. a father, would you think is there any way? I mean, if you know that one of your child's friends or son's friends are into narcotics and you want to, what, is there any way to intervene? What do you mean like? Um, I mean talk to the child, would that be better? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I talk to my kids, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they know my history, I don't, I, 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 I never lie to them. Mm -hmm. um, they know I smoked here and there. Mm -hmm. um, um, they knew I, I saw, at one point I also had my MD card 
because mm-hmm. for the um uh, I need a, a knee replacement. Mm-hmm. I got a bad back, mm-hmm. and I, I got a torn roller cut. Okay. So they gave me the um, the medical marijuana card. Wow. For the pain. Okay. I don't take it. I um I didn't take it for you know hmm. for, to get high, but mostly at night so I can get some good sleep, you know, and I didn't feel the pain. Mm-hmm. But um I only did that for a little bit, but. Right now, it's just just taking it day by day, you know. I got four kids. Nathaniel's it's 21 today. Alexi is 19. Mm-hmm. Should be 20 in September. I got Azela in Florida. And then I got my little one named Jace that he's three years old. So I think he's, he completes me. He's the one that pushes me. You know, all, mm-hmm. all my other kids, I love them all the same. I don't have one favorite than the other one. Mm-hmm. I love them all the same. Jace, um, mm-hmm. Jace is severe autistic, yeah. so I, 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 he, you know, I gotta give him more attention, you know, and he's my last one. I'm gonna have him no more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I didn't, I didn't get to enjoy um, the life that that I lived, you know. Yeah, uh, I lived back to back paychecks, you know. Um, I couldn't do a lot for my kids when, when they were younger like that. So I'm in an opportunity right now where I can do that for Jay's, mm-hmm. you know, and um, but uh, he, he he completes the family, he completes my mm-hmm. my, my my kids, um, and that's what keeps me going is my kids, man, my kids. Yeah, just so it, just take it there by there. So coming back to the family again. Mm-hmm. So. Would you recommend, like we know it's a very much really outside our home, this vaping or narcotics among the young children. Do you, so would you self. like think that if parents or guardians as a family, we had our own times with the children, you know, and explain to them, talk more about them, would that help? What do you think about that? Yeah, um, you know, like giving them a warning before they are into it. Basically, not candy corn, not and just telling them exactly the truth how the world is mm-hmm. and how the streets are. Um, it's a big, you know, it's a big uh, step for us as parents to make sure that they understand. Mm-hmm. Not everybody's a friend, and yeah. at, at, at most of the people out there they have a mask on, you know, mm-hmm. and you don't know who's behind that mask until it's too late. And you see the true colors. That is so you know, true. So you just gotta have a good a good judgment, and you know. I always thought, um, it, 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 especially uh, your daughter, mm-hmm. her being a female in this world, and they go through more stuff than men do, mm-hmm. rape, you know, oh, abuse. That is. You know all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I really don't want my daughter to go through that, so I don't candy call anything to her. So, you know, it's to the point that she knows that the first. It, it, it don't matter if you're if you're Christian. Mm-hmm. It don't matter if you're if you know if you're a regular person. The first thing that a man will ever tell a female, and that that he's going to or that he wants to, just to try to get in her pants. It just it's it's. I don't know, it's a, it's a male thing. Mm-hmm. The first thing is a lie. And she asked me, why is that? Okay, you got two guys that are coming up to you. And one tells you, I'll give you the world or die trying. Mm-hmm. How many times have we all heard that? That's a lie. Yeah. yeah. The world doesn't belong to nobody. Mm-hmm. The world is not his to give to you. But... If somebody comes up to you and tells you, loving you will take my life, but when I look into your life, I know you're worth the sacrifice. Mm-hmm. See, yeah, now, yeah. The, the, his life is his to give to you. That is so true. Such a deep You see what inside. I'm saying? Yeah, and I yeah. was like, you always, there's always signs, there's always keys on, on just certain things, and I, mm-hmm. I, I instilled that into my daughter, so... I feel bad for the guy. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I also <laughs> because she ain't gonna take she ain't gonna take nothing for nobody. I had to do yeah. that to my to my girls, you know. So to keep a close relationship yeah. with the children. So we'll come back to mo- to you more again. I will just take a short break okay. and then come back again. So, so Andrew, please uh, 
from here I would like to know from you as after family what can we more do to help the younger generation and anyone who is into narcotics or vaping to come out of it to have a life that's called normal in the society to adjust to the society so like what do you think as a community neighbors coming together what did you say to that well, i mean besides coming together the most important thing is that um us as parents mm -hmm. we we try to be we're not hard on our kids it, mm -hmm. it's just part of that's what, what we have to do you mm -hmm. know but um i think that we need to stop being parents uh, I like for a few minutes and actually be their best friends oh that's not just your mother and, f and father role you have to open up um like like i said i don't candy coat i can have a conversation with any of my kids mm -hmm. and I, I just be blunt about it and they understand who i am and how mm -hmm. i am and how i speak so i have i'm you know I'm best friend with my kids. I know everything about my kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, I think that uh, now I, I, I'm gonna say stop being a parent because once you have a kid, that's 24 hours, 365 mm -hmm. days of the year for the rest yeah, of your yeah, life. Yeah. You know, that just go without saying. But just, um, just step back mm -hmm. and have you know, interact with them like you're the best friend. Mm -hmm. Get them to know. Um, to talk to you about things and then um a, another thing that i've that i've seen that parents do when they be like oh dad i tried this i tried that mm -hmm. we get in the um um what you call it uh like on the on defense mode and automatically mm -hmm. you're screaming at them and yeah. all you're doing when you're screaming at them is you push it and back mm -hmm. out and they're so mad at you that they're gonna go back and yeah. they're gonna keep doing it again. Mm -hmm. Instead of, okay, you know what, baby? There's something that we need to sit down as a family and talk about it. Yeah. You see you see the difference? Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, dad, you know, I try weed. Oh, what the heck is wrong with you? Blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that pushes the angry kids. Or upset. Yeah. You know, but yeah. a lot of times we can't control that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, what in your mind just like it, you, you know it just clicks in like what what is wrong with you that's bad stuff yeah i mean know? that's not wrong exactly yeah, but I mean, it's how we approach it it's what it's what we need to change i mean the child is never saying? wrong as a child right yeah. what he's doing is wrong to separate those things for the children not to the say what, like you the are number wrong. one thing the kid doesn't uh -huh. want to do is be yelled at mm -hmm. or screamed at you know what i'm saying it is so true so Especially in situations like that, mm -hmm. it's, it's something important in their life. Mm -hmm. And you as a parent, you know about that situation. You have to have a good communication with your kids. You mm -hmm. have to be their friend, not just the father, you know, or the mother. That is you so gotta true. Have, you got to have that connection between mm -hmm. them, that they're not afraid to tell you anything. Okay. You see what I'm saying? If you yell at them... Mm -hmm. Oh, don't let me catch you doing that. I'm going to beat you, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to come to you. You're you know, she can, go down, she, can go down, she, can go, yeah. she can go down the street and, you know, knock on wood, um, you know, she gets beat up or raped or something, mm -hmm. and she's going to keep it to herself because she knows exactly. when she tells her father or her mother, she's going to get yelled at. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And that's mm -hmm. when... Uh, in situations like that, she will go and turn to drugs, narcotics, Definitely. to get rid of the pain and hide it and just have a fake smile that she's okay and when she really isn't. Yeah. You know, so. So one thing I often come across is like um, when parents find suddenly or their daughter or son is into drugs and the first reaction is they don't know what to do. So if you are in s such a situation, what do you say to the parents? Like, what to do first? To first talk to the first, children, man, but we definitely need some profession professional help, right? Um, well, At not, one point. I'll be honest with you. Professional is, is just a bonus. Hmm. The main key for, uh, for health mm -hmm. 
and to uh and, and that addiction is family. Yeah, the but support, when someone is even love. too far gone, then... And if they don't have that, mm -hmm. that's when they're going to go, you know, they're going to get worse in life if they don't have that. That's the first key is the family, support, mm -hmm. and love being shown to them, okay? So I'm being loved, and giving them the, you know, mm -hmm. the, like, you know, the will to, like, want to change. You know, mm -hmm. oh, he loves me, he loves me, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's just, I don't know. Um. So I think one thing that often makes the children go more into drugs is when they feel singled out at home. As you said, not to scream or shout at them, but to take them as a friend and then explain. 50% of the time is pure pressure. Oh. Because they're, out, they're hanging out with their buddies, they started mm -hmm. doing that. Now they are picking on you because you're not doing it, and that's how it starts. Yeah. So I have uh, been thinking lately, is there any thoughts you, you have, like, is there any role the educational institutions can play in it? I'm sorry, the what? The schools can play in it. Suppose a high school or a middle school, do they have any, do they do something more helpful for the children? Can educational institutions do something? <laughs> Like give them more education on it. Um, what do you think? I won't it's say just education your opinion. More activities. Mm -hmm. More activities. Give, get them the mind. Get mm -hmm. them, you know, um, moving the legs, the arms, whatever yeah. it is. Whether it's sports, uh, whether it's sports. To keep them busy. Uh, music. You mean. Yeah. But you, look you know, at the, all the athletes. There are many, many people who are big with at, mm, going games, soccer, etc. But when they are go going back to their peers or their friends, they are into drugs again. So That's I mean, thing. Um, what do you think? It, like it's sacrificing. Obviously, mm -hmm. if those friends you have for years, every time you meet up with them mm -hmm. and you end up to the same back, all you mm -hmm. doing drugs, now answer yourself this question. How? how much really are they your friends? Because mm -hmm. if they were your friends, they won't be pure pressuring you to do this. Oh, come on, take one last hit with me. Or come on, man, it's been a long time, at least, we, you know, with me. Mm -hmm. Then I, then, the, the, they ain't your true friends. So let's think of them collectively, the whole generation that are getting, getting lost. Um, suppose they had a regular you know, learning of how the narcotics or the drugs and everything or op opioids affect. If they had that at school or any other, that's kind of mandatory they have to take. Do you think that would make them more alert on it? What uh, do you think? I think it's good for them to, um, yeah. uh, I mean, depending on what the age bracket is, mm -hmm. I will only go so down so many, you know, to a certain amount, you know, to a certain age. Mm -hmm. You don't want to like go too young and get that instilled in them, and then when they grow up, all they do is think about it, and then they yeah, wanna, yeah. I, I mean, just wanna try it, you know? So, uh -huh. uh, we gotta be careful on uh, how young we mm -hmm. go and open them up to that, you know? Um, but um, I think a good age to start is, um, it's the middle school. Middle school, that's middle wonderful. School is, that's is, what is I was Middle thinking. school is the first one, um, I mean, I'm pretty sure it happens in elementary, but not not so much. More probably like in the ghettos, you know, where ki or kids in elementary are already smoking pot, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, but it's, it, it mostly all starts when you go into uh, yeah, you know, um, middle school, and then it all changes when you go into high school. Mm -hmm. The reality is, Andre. I mean, these days, parents are busy. We cannot deny that we have to earn our lives, we have to pay we the have bills. To work. Mm. Exactly. We Both pay parents the bills. work or it's a single parent. So we can't even give the whole responsibility to the family, quality time, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That's when I think the school they attend to and the home, they can come at a point where I like to make sure the kids have a good rounded knowledge of what it is, how harmful it is. Often we get into dangers because we don't know about it. 
right? So you think the middle school is a starting point where we can tell them more? Like, more like, oh, oh, that's when you need to really open up, really especially open up. about sex. Mm -hmm. Inform yeah, yeah. them about sex. That's a, that's the yeah. number one thing too, because not just drugs are killing us too. Mm -hmm. AIDS, it, oh, AIDS is killing us. So, so the true. so the, the most important thing that you gotta talk to them is about AIDS, because uh, the, once you have it, it just takes one time. Once you have it, you're done. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> it's yeah, a matter yeah. of time. At least with the drugs, you know, mm -hmm. um, you can you can survive, you mm -hmm. know, to a, to a point. So. Um, the first one, uh, the first thing when it comes to middle school is uh, sex education is big, mm -hmm. and then yes, yes. Uh, narcotics. Exactly, you are just in those are the two, thoughts. Those are yeah. the two, those are the two main mm -hmm. things that are killing the children today: uh, AIDS and, 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 and narcotics. So. Yeah, I have a friend was I talking to other day, was saying like every flu season. They have preventative measures. We take flu shots, etc. But this is one thing that's killing millions: AIDS, uh, I mean, narcotics or drugs, opioids. So how come around the year we don't have more preventative things? This is like as we are. It seems we are kind of denial on it until we are on it, and then we want to get cured, but how to prevent it. So if we are as a society, as a community, what do you think of the community coming together? As I, I mentioned that also together, because you know sometimes telling the kids that you are one here doesn't make much sense, but when the kid sees himself or herself as a part of community where it's not just me, it's there are other people like me. They are more likely you know, get in touch with each other also and try to help each other out. Right. So would you think like if you get in a monthly or even bi-monthly basis a community gathering? Uh, I think um, getting the community involved is always a big thing because it's not mm -hmm. just one, it's everybody in the community that you can get involved in with something but the biggest thing is that uh, i i've seen it in the news mm -hmm. i've seen it in the movies like we keep taking stuff from our kids mm -hmm. to save money to save budgets but those are the that's the one program that we should always keep intact that should be our priority it's a children not taking the rec center away because you want to make a motel mm -hmm. where the hell they're going to go to the streets, they have nowhere else to go. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Music, um, how many schools do you hear that are fighting to keep the music programs up because there's no budget? Mm -hmm. Where are they gonna go? To the streets, there's nothing else. The streets is always gonna be there. And that's yeah. where all the kids, you know? Yeah, I totally can understand it. This whole energy in the youth. And, but where to place it? I mean, they have so much to give, and when there is no place to give, they will go into the unwanted places, right? But now let's talk about some happy things you do in life. I think you like music. Would you like to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, um, um, when I was going through my rough times, um, mm -hmm. poetry. Mm -hmm. Wow. Poetry and, um, poetry. poetry and music really changed. Wow. Um, you know, it changed my life. Um, I started writing down. Mm -hmm. I started writing down thoughts, mm -hmm. things that I saw, that I witnessed. Mm -hmm. um, and then music. When I just want to just blank the whole world away from me, mm -hmm. I just put on my headphones and put on some positive music. What kind of music do you um, like? Um, uh, I. I like it all, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, my alternative band is Skillet. They're actually okay. a Christian wow. um, band. Mm -hmm. um, that's my number one on my playlist that I have is Skillet. Uh -huh. um, and I like I like hip hop. I like rap. I like old school rap though, like Nas. 
Mm -hmm. I like Nas, the old Jay Z, stuff like that. Uh, I might enter that mumble rap right now that's going <laughs> on. Okay. Rap. So, what's the current rap that you are mm -hmm. following? Rap music, who's the current one you are doing? Following now? Um, I still um I still listen to like Nas and mm -hmm. and Jay Z and stuff like that, but like um, hmm. So while we think on that, uh, I think some time back you f shared a poem with me. Do you still remember it? I loved it. Something a poem that you were reciting one day, a few days back. Remember about a poem? A any? Do you remember any poem at all that you can just? Tell us now. I'd love to hear um, it. Anything you remember? I, um, my first yeah. poem that I wrote. I was yeah. 12 years old. I'd love to I was hear 13. It. Um, I got arrested, um, and I got sent to this. It was called forestry camp. Uh huh. Um, it was. We had to uh, three months in this island, mm -hmm. and um, I was there with um, people from. There was kids there from. Uh, there were juveniles there from California, mm -hmm. Utah, Arkansas. Wow. Places that you would think that there won't be no gangs or nothing. Mm -hmm. And they got the most they got the most powerful guns. Wow. Because there's no gun laws in those small towns like mm -hmm. that, you know. Uh, I was locked up with um, people that I, I got I went there from for marijuana, but I was pe people there for crack, heroin, coke, wow. guns. Prostituting, prostituting. Mm -hmm. So it was just a mixture of all of us. Um, it was good to be, you know, to t all, all of us to talk about all because we were all there for different things, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and um, do you remember a few lines from um, anything? Yeah. So we had to write a poem mm -hmm. why wow. we were there. That was the thing, and it was 15% of the grade, wow. uh, the last grade for us to do. So. Um, Everybody did a poem, a poem about what they were there. Obviously, I was there for marijuana, so um, uh, the poem was. Um, it's called a drug taken within, mm -hmm. and um, it goes, uh, a drug taken within will make your heart spin. Tingle with your mind, thinking someone's standing behind. About to approach the last talk of the roach. Forgetting what was in your mind. Your heart is crying. Your soul is flying. Thoughts are all within. It just races right out of your skin. Wow. That was so awesome. I, I was 13 years old. So are you still doing some poetry? Uh, I'm always doing poetry. I'm always doing poetry. Uh, my poetry to me is my diary. Okay, so I, I, I always had... Um, um, I had the thing that, um, that people always ask me, how come you don't do a book, this and that, blah, 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 because <laughs> it's, I was going to cause ask it, cause it's my diary, you know, oh. but, uh, but, um, mm -hmm. I thought about it and I was like, so, you know, I gathered up some, some poems, I put them together and I was like, what, you know, what to call those, the book? So mm -hmm. it just dawned to me, it's, a, it's, it's a diary to me. It's, it's my diary. Mm -hmm. So, you know. You don't want people to read a diary. It's oh, just no. personal things that you write on it. But my, uh, the way I write is poetry. Everything is poetry. Everything with the rhyme. Oh, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, I just so I was like, okay, diary. All right, diary of a poet. Yeah, I mean it's totally. That's if the name. You, it's that, your thing. That would be the name. That would be the name of the yeah, book if if I ever I go forward and approach it. to it. I it would be diary, it. diary of a poet. I just love the one you told me right now, excited, and that was amazing. I, it makes me want that was to a big step. read that more was the of first, your poems. That was a uh, first step for me, yeah. you know. Um, I've I've written and forgotten so many, mm -hmm. but that was like my first step, my first push. And I just, I, I mean, they all come from the heart, but that mm -hmm. one was like really, that poem always like, it's always going to mean something to me, it's like, like a where I came of life from. For you. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I'll never forget those words. No, I, but I, I, will, I will take those words to my grave. <laughs> <laughs> I'll awesome. never forget them, you know. So, 
No, but I can understand your feeling too because my own brother, he's a fantastic writer. He writes, but he never ever goes into publishing. He says, this is my, like, this is my life, this is where I am. I, I don't want to share it, but I think when you do something that makes you happy, and we all have rights to share it or not. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know. But um, if you ever want to share, every let me art know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I'm always down to sign. Um, every artist, mm -hmm. whether it's clothes designing mm -hmm. or, you know, going off on a set of drums mm -hmm. or going off on a guitar mm -hmm. or writing mm -hmm. or doing poetry or writing music. Yeah. That whatever one they choose, whatever artist mm -hmm. or, or artiste, whatever he chooses, that's his way yeah. of uh, showing the world, you know, uh, exp um, expressing themselves mm -hmm. through that art, to you the know, art. and mine is poetry. That's wonderful. You know, so. And I hope you keep up with it. Uh, you know, I always, I always write stuff down, especially when hard times. You but know. you know, there are many platforms these days out there, online platforms where you can sign up and you don't have to use your own name either. You can just share them and the feedbacks that you get from other writers sometimes is really just awesome. I mm. mean if you step back to like 30 years back we didn't have these platforms you know where you can just sign up, free sign ups and share your poetry. It's like fun. there's one for hellopoetry.com mm. and there are many other like that. Um, I, I, it's, I write, nobody changes what I write, mm -hmm. but, um, my, my girlfriend, um, well, fiance, mm -hmm. she, uh, doesn't understand, um, oh. like, um, when it comes to songwriting, mm -hmm. people don't just, sometimes they do, but you, just because you singing about a sexual song mm -hmm. and, and, and the couple was cheating on each other. That doesn't necessarily mean that she's going through that. It's that yeah. that's the topic that a lot of people are going through. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people can relate to that. That doesn't mean that she was messing around her husband with another dude. Mm -hmm. That's why I, that's how I write. I write, not, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that I witness. Like, for example, I love to take the bus in the summertime. I have the car. But I like to take a bus because you hear all types of different conversations. Oh, totally. I am. And, I love my bus rides. And, and a yeah. lot of my poetry comes from on the bus, uh -huh. because I heard this. I heard this kid saying, uh, he puts these words together in a sentence. Like mm -hmm. you know how the slang is always changing. Yeah, yeah. I might like a phrase that this kid said. Ooh, I like that. I'm writing it down. You know. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, uh, you, you know. Let me. Okay. So this and this. And then next thing you know. Once that pen hits the paper, yeah, it just yeah. goes with the flow, and it just goes until you finish, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so a, 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 a lot of them, I took a bus a long time. But look at you, you are <laughs> doing all that music, poems, you have a family, you are a great dad, and who would believe you are in a place well, one day where it, it was hard to think that you are alive again. I'm so not, this I'm is not all in the you. Greatest, I'm not in the greatest place oh. of my life right now, but I, but I'm content. I'm happy with what I have right now, because okay. there's people doing worse than what I have, uh -huh. and you gotta share it. Even if it's the little bit that you have, you mm -hmm. have to share it because somebody else exactly. wish that wish to, that they had what you had. Exactly. You know. That is so why you know, I we are having conversation you know, today. I'm not rich. You know, yeah. I'm not a billionaire. I don't drive a Bugatti. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm content right now, you know, so. Oh, and, you know, hopefully my life gets better financially, you know. Well, money doesn't necessarily you know, make yeah, you so totally happy. You don't have to be a billionaire. I'm okay right I now. believe, I'm, you know. I'm okay. I'm happy. I'm healthy. That's good. I got my kids. That's great. I believe in, so. So I will be sadly have to go and end the show. But before I go, I would like you to mention that sentence about quitting. You just told me a while ago. But oh, no, yeah. just hold on a moment. Okay. I'll just bid farewell to my audience. Okay. And you will have the last words to the audience. All right. So to anyone who is not so in a happy place in life, it may be many things. 
uh, it doesn't have to be narcotics, it doesn't have to be opioids or substance abuse or vaping. There are times life is too challenging, but when you trust yourself, that deep within self that's you, always know that that's the strongest self and you can come out, it's just a temporary challenge. Let's climbing a tree, there are branches, but you can go to the top, climb. So thank you so much to MRS Media for making this show and thank you to my honorable audience who are watching and are with us today. And before I say goodbye to you, I'll let Andre leave a message for anyone who needs to, to find the sunlight again. There you go, Andre. All right, um, I'm gonna uh, I'm I'm finish off saying that um, no matter how, how hard or how tough life is, um, I've been in a situation where why am I even alive? Why is my purpose here in, in, in life? And just, I just never quit, man. Like, I just kept stepping, taking one step at a time, and I, I just never quit. And, you know, um, don't ever quit. Never, ever, ever, never give up. Um, push, push yourself to the limits. Um, and that, that, that's it. Just have the mentality that you're always going to win. You're always going to um, make something better of yourself. And um, my name is Andres Dominguez, and thank you guys for having me. Yeah. It's a pleasure. And thank you so much, Andre, you. for <laughs> doing the show. Thank you. Everyone, bye. Bye bye.